Hey, this is the third part of this manhwa. If you didn't watch previous parts, then watch now. Link in description. So, let's get started. Last time we see. He said that his body was shutting down as the nerves in his face start to turn black. Just keep moving until he actually succeeds and the blue window again appears, saying that there was only one more room left and also saying that everything was restored. That blue demon starts to call Jake, calling him a boy for him to wake up. Jake's body at that moment was being totally regenerated and he is even a little relieved because he is really alive. And that blue demon said no because he really thought he was a goner a few seconds ago. And they both start laughing at the situation even though he almost died for real. He looks at his hand and says that his body is back to normal besides the acid having disappeared from his body. Even his clothes were restored. The demon said that he passed very close. But it wasn't time to relax yet because there was still a door and that timer there that he was pointing at was still working. Jake, looking at that blue window of the system, said that there was still one more room and he was lying down on the floor. He said he needed just one more minute. He said he really had a few seconds ago died while that blue demon asked if he was okay. He said that for the first time since he entered the tutorial, he really faced death. He told that demon not to misinterpret him. He really likes to fight. Dancing on a nice edge, dodging and launching attacks, fatal. But dying alone because of shitty acid from a damp cave was humiliating and he said no one could accept dying this way. That blue demon said he understood he was also very lonely, so he spent an eternity in a necklace wondering if he would ever see the world again. He commented that it put a new perspective on things. Jack ended up getting up and telling that dungeon to fuck off. He said he really wouldn't let that place kill him, and that's why they end up opening the next door again. As before, there were several platforms. They wondered what was happening there, all those platforms, but different from the others. They were organized. That demon said that perhaps it seemed that he simply wanted to do the mushroom trick to get across, and they start to think that it should be some kind of mind game. The person kneeling on the ground starts to think that that middle line has the third symbol, but it's just Y Vern and a mountain. There's nothing else in it that can act as a clue. He was apparently going to heaven, perhaps angry, but then he looked better and said that it didn't seem like that. He started to remember him, and he said that he didn't have anger. He starts to remember him at the beginning of the tutorial and starts to say that it looked like he was roaring in fear, not out of anger, and he starts to say that he thought maybe he knew what to do. He starts to go backward and gets ready to give that demon a run. He even gets a little scared and starts to warn Jake that those symbols were still glowing blue. Meaning if he stepped on it, he would certainly die. But Prada doesn't listen and starts running, picking up momentum while that animal asked what he was doing. In his impulse, he starts to prepare to stop on one of the platforms. He ends up stepping on one of them while that animal covered his eye. He said that he wouldn't even like to see that protest. Said that the answer was courage while those platforms he had stepped on before exploded. And he said that when facing fear, it was necessary to have willpower while he jumped from platforms to platforms. He was remembering everything that happened at that moment in that apocalypse. He said that the courage to move forward was the key and ends up reaching the finish line. The platforms he passed end up exploding while the challenge has been completed and the message appears that animals start saying that he really was crazy and the system warns that all his statistics have been restored and all the abilities reactivated. He starts to think that he could feel his body returning to normal. That demon Azul starts hitting him on the head saying he was very crazy and a new system message appears that the hidden challenge was completed. It was to show courage to do what was necessary and the hidden bonus room was unlocked. The parrot starts to think what kind of bonus room this was. They arrive at a location, and he wonders what type of place was that. He said there didn't seem to be any kind of wires, and there was just this giant mural carved on the wall. It looked like some kind of story. The snake ate mushrooms, and as she grew, wings began to appear, and she flew to the sky, flew over the world, devastating the land beneath him, and the creatures began to worship the winged serpent. They followed him as if they were servants, he fought monsters, stronger and stronger, until finally she simply became a vibrant, massacring everything she came across, even his own followers. After everything was destroyed, the wyvern found himself alone at the top of a mountain. 
He roared to the sky with time passed until finally, after countless years, he ascended to the heavens. No, it was an Ivan, but a dragon, and that blue demon said that it was even his dead followers in protest said he thought so. A blue system window appears, saying that he had witnessed the strength of a true dragon, and he got 10 willpower from that blue demon. He asked the PR what he thought that meant, while the prototype replied that he didn't know. With a smile on their faces, they continued looking at the drawing of the dragon. He said that he would stop fighting against that dragon one day. After a while, they continue walking and Jake commented that there were only corridors and more corridors there. He said he thought he hadn't fully learned the dungeon yet until he suddenly stops. That blue creature ends up hitting him. The little demon said he was really starting to miss those shiny mushrooms and asked Jake if he could see anything different there. And Jake explains that he put a lot of his points into perception, although he starts to think that it's not just his stats that allow him to see. He can feel his bloodline abilities getting more strong and the sphere of perception increases when he is in danger. And he said that at that moment he was always going in a small radius, like some kind of passive skill. And he wonders if he should tell or Cecil about this because if he was the age, he says maybe he would know what happens to the silver tells the heat that if he wants he could put it back on the collar until he finds a light source. But he, he said that there was no way he wanted to go back there. And the PR even asked why not and even asked if it was. So it's so bad to stay there for that long. And if I explained that the place itself is good, he could see what was happening outside. But once inside you are trapped until someone lets you out and it showed the count of days he was there which was 6394. He explained that he didn't want to be abandoned for another millennium again and Jake looked at him and said that was it. He said he was arrested and starts patting Cecil on the head, saying that he would never do that to him but Cecil. He simply says that's what everyone says until out of nowhere, Cecil shouts, saying he was seeing a light unknown. They start heading towards it and protests said that it didn't look much like the glow of a mushroom until they arrive in a gigantic room full of books and he wonders what kind of place was that, while Cecil said that it looked like some kind of library. Protest starts looking at the books and realized that those books were very old. He tries to touch them while a blue energy appears. He said he couldn't touch them directly and the sessions simply calls Jake saying that he found a table there and explained that there were some utensils written on them. While the Jake is touching it, he realizes that he couldn't either and he starts to wonder if there was some kind of barrier blocking everything. But no challenge had appeared at that moment and he wondered what it was all about. Until our little blue ends up pointing to a door that was open. Protest said he thought they were still going to have to keep walking. They end up passing through that door and looking around and what was in that place was just more and more doors. Still said that that dungeon was starting to seem a little repetitive. The guy opens a random door and says it was just a room. Then he opens another one and it's just a bathroom and Cecil ends up opening one of the doors too. Apparently, it was a garden full of flowers. Jake ends up opening another that was a science laboratory or a torture chamber. Then I couldn't tell anymore. Still commented that they, they should be at someone's house or something while Jake goes towards the last door. Apparently, he was talking that only that door remains and you could see that there were mushrooms around it. He said it was great, it was a challenge room. They come close and say that there was another pedestal in the middle of the room. But the Paris said there was no, there was no dagger that time. It looked like a print of a hand, a normal hand, a human hand. So he said he thought the challenge wanted him to touch it. And then Cecil said that after the incident at Wyvern, maybe it's not a good idea, but I just laugh and ask where his sense of adventure. And as you can imagine, he simply puts his hand on that pedestal until something happens and where he was with his hands starts to turn purple. Something hits his hand while little Cecil starts calling Jake's name. One thing is that there was a hole in that hand and the PR was down saying that his hand it had been right. He said it was very bad. Apparently, there was poison on that spear or some object what pierced him. I know if I was saying to look again because there is a new pedestal going up. I saw a book with the symbol about that snake eating mushrooms. Jake said there should be something there for the challenge. I think it's just him eat a mushroom. A blue system window ends up appearing. It was the dungeon challenge. Become an alchemist of the evil viper and cure yourself of the poison that runs through your veins. 
and there it's said that the poison would remain inactive for 30 days after that if he did not heal himself would die. He starts looking at the palm of his hand, a little nervous of course, while another window appears. Reject. The challenge would result in the challenger's full recovery and his return to Big Forest, only that all rewards will be withheld and all items will be returned. He tells the Cecil who realized that he could choose whether he continued or not. He could end that place, but he would have to cure that poison that runs through his veins. Cecil ends up asking what Proto wanted to do in this case. Jake, looking at the screen, said that there was only one thing to do at that moment. He said of course that he didn't go there to escape a challenge, and the scene ends up cutting to the Great Forest. There was one of the old companions of the MC. One of them thought that William, and he approached from the east angle. They end up deciding to attack and try to catch one of the deer there. He explained that the plan was as follows. Bertrand would isolate them from the south, and they would end up being cornered in the west straight into the trap they prepared the night before. So, managing to capture them, he ends up shouting for Casper to do it. Casper soon ends up pulling, and the net ends capturing three of them. But he ended up realizing that one had narrowly escaped. Two of them were looking at those deer captured, and a blonde man said he was going to finish it. He ends up throwing three daggers in the direction of that servant who had fled. He ends up falling to the ground injured, and he had captured the servant. He is happy raising his wand that he had captured and achieved, but one of them ends up hurting that blonde. Ends up apologizing to Casper. His goal was so terrible, but he said that it was just a superficial moment, and he wasn't supposed to worry about that. That blonde ends up pointing at the servant, and he said that at least he had dinner during the week. Jake's old companion ends up calling everyone and saying that they had done a great job. He calls Lara asking if she could help finish with that, to which she replies yes it would help, and after an hour they were carrying all the food that they had caught. The boy said he was sorry. He was sorry that his trap hadn't been able to catch all of them. But Adam looks at him and told him not to be like that. Only one servant had managed to escape, and those Ali was more than enough for a hunt, and that girl asks if he was okay calling him dear. He said it was great and asked her to go ahead because they would take it all to the butchers. After a while, they end up arriving at the place. They end up saying goodbye and they had already arrived at village. Adam starts making fun of him, calling him sweet and saying that things were happening too quickly between the two of them. And the boy was a little surprised and asked if he was really fast because he said he hoped she didn't think he was some kind of scumbag or something. But Adam touches him on the shoulder, telling him to relax. It's the end of the world by the way, things should happen really quickly for them to enjoy it. And the boy said that's why he saw Adam hiding in Caroline's house at night. But then Adam gets desperate. He can't say a single word, but then the boy starts laughing, telling him not to worry because he hadn't even told anyone. But he in the end said he thought they all know. After a while, Adam enters a tent calling Smith and asking how he was doing. Smith asked if his sword needed repairs again and Caroline was there. He even said he didn't need it. He said he was just looking for that woman there and he commented to Caroline that Casper was injured in the hunt and he could need some healing from her. She ends up apologizing because she needed to get some armor for Richard and Adam asks if he was doing any tasks for her at that moment. She says he knows what it's like, anything to keep her in the main group. Adam then goes out with her, and he said that apparently Casper saw him coming to visit her. He was even unhappy that he was sneakier than Jake. Caroline, smiling, said that she always comes back to Jake and asked him to follow ahead, calling him darling. Adam gets a little embarrassed and said he only cared a little about him, and already it's been weeks since they broke up and no one heard anything. And Caroline said Jake was a man as an adult, he could take care of himself and Adam asked her what she thought he would be doing at that moment. Caroline hugging him said that he might be doing something stupid and dangerous like fighting a shark. And on the other side was our Jake. He was collecting mushrooms and commented that he was full of those damn mushrooms and Sissel said that maybe if he stopped eating them. He wouldn't need to keep coming back to collect more of them. But Jake said that he has unlocked an ability that allows him to learn about poisons by eating, and he starts screaming, saying besides, it's not like there are chickens there for him to support himself. And then Cecil comments that he was doing a lot well with the constant diet of moss and cave water and him opening his mouth and eating. Some said he should try. 
After a while, they end up going back to the library while Cecil was talking. He asks if Cecil could get some mana potions. He needed to replenish his mana before starting to prepare the beer, and Syl asks him if he couldn't just rest that night. They were working for hours, but then suddenly felt a pain. He said no, he needed to discover this cure soon. Besides needing to know about alchemy soon. Time was short, there was no what to waste time. He said he was going to make a health potion or healing potion. He starts to make it and say that first he was supposed to grind the ingredients until they formed a paste, and after that he was supposed to inject mana in that folder, and the next step was for him to transmute the mana into the knee attribute Sirio. And if he did this the right way, this folder would be completely red. But while he's trying, it turned brown and he couldn't get it. He started to get nervous. Biting his lip, he said there was another batch been ruined. Or if I told him to relax. He had only been practicing for a week, so he had plenty of time yet. And he said that his wisdom is too low to prepare these potions efficiently. He needed another man, a potion. He would try that again. Cecil said that there is a waiting time for these potions, and asks if he knew if he started swallowing them, they would simply be fired, and then the silver feels more a pain as Cecil runs to see if he was okay. Jake, taking off his shirt, explained that the poison was getting worse. After then Cecil looked at the poison, he said that it wasn't good at all. Chapter 15 begins with Adam arriving in a room and asking if Richard wanted to see him. Richard would simply tell Adam that he was very grateful that he appeared there, even more so that he appeared so quickly like that. He crosses his hands and starts saying that they had a fighter squadron that came back with nothing that day, which meant that they were low on meat. He explained that he wanted to send his group on an impromptu hunt in the depths of the forest, but Adam is even a little surprised. What do you mean outside the territory? He says. Richard simply smiles and says that it was precisely a little more dangerous than the normal forest, but that's why he was entrusting this task to him. Adam said he would be grateful, but he didn't know if it was good to do that since it was very dangerous, and he didn't want to risk his group because of meat. But then Richard tells him not to worry. He said that anything they considered deadly would still be treated by his group. He is not the type of leader who sends his men to the slaughterhouse. And then Adam scratches his face and asks if he could take Coraline together. He said that having a lamp nearby would help a lot to calm his nerves, but Richard, with a slight smile on his face, said that Adam knew he couldn't do it. He even said it was nothing personal, but he shares the parts very rigorously. Then Adam gets up and says that if that's what he wants, he would call his team, and when he was leaving, Richard asked him to wait because he needed one more favor. He asked him to leave Casper at the camp, and Adam simply asks why with a straight face. Richard explained that one of the scouts saw a gap in their fence, and they were thinking another group of survivors might be their eavesdropping on them from there. And he said that they said Casper was a great trap manufacturer, so he wanted him to reinforce their perimeter. And Adam ends up saying he would let him know when they found it. And a little later that day, they were preparing to load the badgers that were haunted. One of them even asks how many badgers they had gotten, and Casper's girlfriend ends up saying that she thought there were eight of them there. And Adam even commented that not only the skin was quite resistant, there were a lot of them too. And he ended up throwing the last one into the pile of dead badgers. William smiling said that it was very very cool and Adam looking at him said that he was soaked in blood. He said that they would wrap the corpses and he would wash near the river because he was horrible like that. Then William salutes and says yes sir. While William is going to the river, he starts thinking about Adam and Richard. He said they were both starting to get on his nerves, and he, looking up starts to think that it's just a bunch of pretentious NPCs. Ask him, but he said whatever. He can't wait to finish that camp until he hears something in the middle of the forest. He ends up crouching down as there was someone nearby. He saw a man, and he was asking to control himself because they didn't know who was there. But then he gets a look at someone else. A woman who told him to relax because they would be quick there and the third person appears. The guy said that he just needed to wash his wand and then William starts to think there was no healer and he started to ask what type of level each of them had. And one of the bushes that were nearby started making noise and then one of the guys noticed and said that there was someone in the woods. So that's it guys, if you want more, then like and comment. And subscribe to our Manhua Ghost YouTube channel for more quality full content.
We create every Manhua recap video after searching a good Manhua. I also upscale all photo to show you guys high quality image. Other side script writing is a headache. So guys, there is too much effort to create a Manhua video. So please guys support me. Thank you.